It's Toy on the Isle with me, Charles Gross, and Leslie Hoban Blake. Tonight, reviews of The Inheritance and Sing Street, plus interviews with Maury Eston and Gerard Alessandrini. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Two on the Isle. And hello again, Leslie. Hello, Charlie. Here we well, are we... at the very cusp of the new year. New yes. Year. Last show of 2019. Well, not very quite. Exciting. This is airing in the new year. Well, yes, so we're, we're, actually... we're taping so it. So, but... Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Okay. Well, we have um, one very, very long show to talk about. Well, it's actually parts one. The and Inheritance. Two. Well, this is like six, a little over six hours, yeah. two parts, which means you have to buy two tickets to see it. And this is based on the Howard's End by E.M. Forster. And it's an interesting setup because Forster kind of actually appears at the beginning. He's having a writing class. Uh, with students who, I guess, want to adapt and update his work, which is why um, very often the characters will talk about themselves in the third person, or they will say, all right, he does this. No, he does this or that. And that goes on, and you kind of have to remember that throughout the show, because it, at times it, it can be lost in the, in the source. Mm, okay, right. so this is basically, um, I would say, the gay experience brought, brought up to date. Say, in, in, in New York, stretching back, say, to the time of Angels in America. Remembering and kind, and back kind, and yeah. looking forward is, I think, what you right. would say. I think that's a, I think that's a, well, a good okay. way Thank to you. describe it. Let me, I think the best way to really describe what happens is to talk about the characters. First of all, Walter. He's an older gentleman who, during the AIDS crisis, would take sick gay men to his house and be with them, take care of them, until they died. Who meets Eric, a younger man, and they strike up a friendship because at this point both are living in a Manhattan building where Eric has a rent-controlled or stabilized apartment. And they strike up a friendship. And unbeknownst to Eric, Walter leaves him the house after he dies. And then there is, uh, let's see, well, let's go to Toby. Toby is Eric's lover who leaves him just as his book is being published and he's becoming a success as a writer and he is going on to do an adaptation of the play on Broadway, very self-destructive. And Henry Wilcox, who was Walter's lover, becomes Eric. Eric is the one who Walter left the house to, becomes Eric's lover, and is the one who Walter told to leave the house to Eric. So Walter told Henry, who's this billionaire developer, leave the house to Eric. Charles, I think if anybody can follow what you just said, they deserve a prize. It's okay. a very convoluted yes. story. I don't think we need to tell the actual events. I think well, the over picture is well, what's important. Also, and, but but well, also one character, Leo, a prostitute, yes. who is in gets who Eric tries to shelter and who Toby tries to shelter, mm -hmm. and who has had a history with Henry, who was the billionaire. Everybody has a history with everybody in this play. It's very different. It, Angels in America was dark, dark and depressive and unhappy, except for the final part when you, you, you flash forward. But everybody was dying, and they didn't know why, and they didn't know how. So now we have a group of beautiful young men sitting around, like mm -hmm. at the Hamptons, or or maybe in Providence, in New York, maybe in, in, maybe in out Manhattan, at, uh, maybe out in uh, uh, Ocean Beach, wherever. They, they're they're but they're they're all in, in they look like a J Crew <laughs> <laughs> and they're barefoot, and they're handsome, and they're and 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 of course, then there's the character playing uh, E.M. Forster, uh, and and what happens is you just get sunlight, and it's 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 a different time, and the point is don't forget what was. But there is also darkness, maybe not the same type of darkness that you had in Angels, mm -hmm. but their own personal demons, even though yes, but that's a so totally different thing. Right, but again, that's. Again, it, it brings the, it kind of tells what's the state of things today mm -hmm. for the gay community and how far things have come. Yes, well, yes. The whole idea is how far things have come, how, th how far things still have to go, uh, of course. But, it, but and, and the, the whole three and a half hours or three, three, point, three hours and five minutes revolves around the ending. And at the ending, there's the naming, and the naming is names of people who have passed. I, I don't know. I didn't read this. They're probably real names of people who have passed. I would love to be able to put a well, friend. Interestingly, name. at the end of the first play. That's what I'm saying. Oh, I'm sorry. And I'm saying so. The names are read, and people and actors dressed as spirits of those people walk well, down the aisle. Well, Eric, out. Eric. No, that's. I think that's. In, it's in the second one, isn't that's it? That's the first. Oh, that's play. the first that's one. Okay. The end of the first play, okay. and they walk down the aisles, and the man next to me was sobbing, 
and the woman next to me had a tissue to her eyes. And, and I thought, I wish that they had a place where you could put names of other people, because I had names I wanted to add to that list. Right. And so you walk out of there, and it's kind of like a mind-blowing thing. Well, what it is, is Eric is in the house, yes. and these, their spirits and come the spirits, to visit. Yes. So in a way, it, it's a little reminiscent of angels when the angel appears, except that these spirits do not quite play the same role. In fact, it's a very small uh, role but that they play in, in the second moving. part. It, it really, it, it really hits you over the head with a hammer without, without doing it. It's just naming mm -hmm. the names. And then you go out and you have dinner and you come back. I mean, some people go, do it in two days. I right. did it in one day. Uh, so then you come back and then it's a totally different play. Then you have the older character, Benjamin Hickey, uh, who plays... Um, John Andy Benjamin Wolcox. Hickey, who plays... He's the billionaire. Yes. Who was Walter's lover yes. and, and he becomes really Eric's lover. And he's dressed in a suit. And mm. he's, you know, he's, he's older and you see he's... More diffident. He's not open and and um, warm and and, and, and you have and you have something that I never thought I'd see in this day and age. Mm -hmm. You actually have a civil discussion about politics in the play. And in the second act, we have the lovely Lois Smith, who is yes. the only female character, who was the caretaker of the men who were brought to the house. She's an well, she was the caretaker of the house whose son was cared for yes. by Walter. And she came to stay at the house and right. become a caretaker for other people's right. sons. So all so, in all, this is a very powerful work, very. but at times it can be long. Written by Matthew Lopez, who's a new name to me. He's on work right now, at right. work right now, on a musical, I was told by Maury Yester, one of our guests. Um, and this is an enormous cast. And as I say, the only two names I know, well, Samuel Levine plays Adam and Leo. Leo right. Levine, Adam, Leo is the prostitute. Adam is an actor in Toby's play, who right. Toby develops right. an, an obsession for. Uh, Andrew Burlap is Toby. Uh, Kyle Soler um, is Eric. Wonderful, wonderful performance. He's kind of the focal point of the play. Oh, I see it. I see it. I found it. Okay. Of the play. Um, it's and really Paul Hilton. Hilton Paul Hilton who plays is Walter. Walter. Uh, the director is uh, Stephen Daldry. And again, it's is it up to the level of angels? No. The characters are not as strong. The story is not as strong. And sometimes, and there are a lot, and there are can, can be riffs and monologues. I mean, well, there um, are monologues for days. I can imagine. Lo Lois casting. Smith does a wonderful monologue, but it's way too long. I can imagine casting that. directors in the future saying, "No, nothing, nothing from uh, from Inheritance." Because they will be done to death, I'm sure, and and as I, and mm. as you say, the one from for Lois is incredible, um, but long. The play is long. I agree with you. I did sit through two parts of it. I, sitting is hard for me. That's a, an mm -hmm. interesting problem. But um, you didn't mind it. I I did it. You know, I did right. a marathon and mm -hmm. <laughs> at the Ethel Barrymore Theater. Yes, uh, and out. and so you've mentioned the director. Yes. The stage set, which is very simple, is by uh, Bob Crowley, who's done many things and won mm -hmm. several Tonys here. There's no one in the world, maybe, mm -hmm. except Matthew Lopez, who would look at Howard Zinn and say, I'm going to write a gay play that's going to be all men, because that isn't the way it's presented. And yet, obviously, there's an undertone that someone like right. Matthew Lopez could pick up on that probably the rest of us don't see. And your conclusion? Oh, my conclusion is, okay, it's six, I will put together with the intermission, six and a half hours, mm -hmm. six hours and 40 minutes, um, and dinner. Um, so everything has to be Not included in. in the theater. No, and everything has to be factored in. Yes. Lovely restaurants all up and down the street. Mm -hmm. uh, I would give it four. I would concur. And here you have something that was fresh, original, and very modern. And a new voice. Matthew Lopez and a new voice. a voice we will follow uh, in the way that Tony Kushner mm -hmm. was burst on the scene. Okay. Moving okay. on. Moving on. So we're moving downtown now. We're going away from Broadway. Mm -hmm down to our old favorite New York Theater Workshop, yep. to a play called Sing Street, which is the sequel to the play Once, which also started at Sequel? Newark. It is called the sequel to, yes. Really? It's written as, and I'll tell you why, okay? Mm -hmm. um, it's about the rest of the kids in Ireland who have voices, and that's what. Anyway, it's the okay. follow-up. Maybe would that be a better word? I think it would be. The follow-up takes place in the 80s, and the 80s were, were a terrible time in Ireland for young people. There, was no, there were no jobs. It, it wasn't the potato famine of, of 1847, but it came close. It was a mind drain. What was the point of going to college? There were no jobs to go to. So New York got an influx of well-educated Irish people at that time, and, which is not in the play. The play is about what they do, and they go sideways, these kids. They decided to, to sing. And this is a play on words, because sing, of course, 
spelled S-Y-N-G-E, is the name of, the, of, of one of Ireland's most famous playwrights, and the, the, on the side, the school is on okay. Sing Street. Well, this is, uh, the, the focus here is um, on Connor, played uh, by... Uh, by O'Connor, yes. Yes, well, uh, Renock O'Connor from uh, Game of Thrones. And his family has been greatly affected by the recession. His father was an architect, now finding no work, and the family is probably going to have to sell its house. He has to go to a different school. Okay. And along the way, he meets this girl, uh, Zara Devlin, by a telephone. And for some reason, he likes her. And he decides he's going to impress her by starting a band even though he doesn't play an instrument or he doesn't uh, well, he's never done a band before. Their, their favorite band is Duran Duran, and so all of their music is inflected with and, and inspired by the, that kind of music. And it's not a great musical. It isn't a once. There's no question that it reaches that level. Once was an extraordinary play. So and the score is by Gary uh, Clark and uh, John Carney. Carney directed the movie that this is based he on. He was it, also yeah. one of the creators of, of Once. Uh, Edna Walsh, who did Once on Broadway, repeats the book chores. Sonia Taya is the uh, choreographer who I was right. trying to find. And the director is Rebecca Teichman. Now, direct, Re Rebecca Teichman did Indecent, which I love to right. learn. And Sonia Taya. Well, this, this re yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. This, really re this really feels a lot like a follow-up to Once. And I, I have to say, I, well, the staging, you see them with the instruments, their aspirations, you know, are, mu are musical, you know, they're coming, they're downtrodden. It's, uh, again, it goes over a lot of the very similar themes. And I think we forgot to mention uh, that Connor, who, was, again, the focal character, has to go to a new school, and he's up against a very malicious brother running the school. Who berates him for not wearing the right the, the right yes, shoes, the, the knowing priest, full know that his family the, the can't family afford sends them. Sends him out barefoot. The priest is very badly is portrayed as a very bad person. Yes, and there uh, is such a, a, a Martin tremendous. Moran. Pardon. Martin M Martin Moran uh, portrays yes, him. Moran. Brother Baxter is. There's the such a, a a a real love hate relationship with the priesthood in Ireland, especially now. Uh, mm. Ireland is definitely a Catholic country. Um, but I, I th all in all, the dancing is not up to, uh, uh, in once, we had a specific kind of muscular pounding thing that made the, the rhythms were fantastic. But none of that is here. This is just dance. It's movement. It, it doesn't quite move the show in the ways that I would have liked to have seen the show move. So well, I, I don't think anything really gels in this show. The story feels like, well, haven't I seen this before mm -hmm. somewhere? You know, new boy, new environment. You know, the boy meets girl. All right, and uh, Frank. All right, I admit I've never seen a play where the boy meets the girl and the girl is standing by a play phone waiting for a call from her right. boyfriend. Right. But but I just want to go back to this choreographer because mm -hmm. she did Moulin Rouge. Mm -hmm. So if you, you, now do you see why I was concerned about the dancing not or or lack thereof? Lack thereof. She. We know that she can do it, and I'm not asking for it to be Moulin Rouge. Obviously, it's a bunch of kids. In, in Dublin in the 1980s, but I would have liked to see more flavor of the 1980s in the movement. That there were specific dance moves, and I, I didn't see them. Did you? I mean, I, I don't it know. It did not feel like the 80s to okay. me. All right, well, that's. If that's, you that's, know, so it, 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 it could have, it, as far as I was concerned, it could have been taking place here, yeah, and, here and, and now. And, and, and that's such an important fact. It's, a, it's, a, it's an actual character. It's why they, they, they feel they have to yeah. do something. They're not just kids. Yeah with nothing to do who right. started Just man. a couple of mentions. Uh, Gus Halper as Connor's older brother, who is a slacker, hasn't been out of the house in years. Uh, and uh, Skylar Volpe as his sister, who was in college, ironically studying to be an architect, and she's supposed to be the hope of the family, and, which and the I'm kind of wondering why the father, if the father can't get a job as an architect, well, maybe she's... Well, go off to New York and yeah. become an architect. Well, no, maybe that's, that's, that's in the sequel, and she's, all the pressure is on her. Mind you, that all turned around in, in 2000, 2010, People went back or didn't leave, which I'm right. glad. I'm happy to know that. Right, I mean, but unfortunately, they really can't turn this musical into something musical. that um, that was entertaining. I I liked once the movie. I was not a great fan of it on stage. Mm -hmm. This really doesn't come up to that level I at like all. My conclusion would be 2.75. Uh, exactly. Very easy right, right to on the button. One, yeah. Okay. Well, there we go. <laughs> Tonight, we are very happy to have two very special guests in our interview. So let's go to Gerard Alessandrini and Maury Esten.
Well, anything indeed can happen in the theater. Just look at our guests this afternoon. Maury Estin, Yeshiva Bachur, Yale professor, and wrote a couple of songs for shows like Oh, nine, Titanic, Grand Hotel. And next to him, a man who took those songs, spoofed them, if not outright butchering them, as well as those of many Broadway composers, Broadway's bad boy, creator of Spamilton and Forbidden Broadway, Gerald Alessandrini, and I shudder to think of whatever would happen if he fell into the wrong hands. <laughs> Together, they have come up with an interesting review of Mr. Yeston's songs, which is playing at the York Theater which is also where Forbidden Broadway will be playing very shortly. That's right. Okay. How did this collaboration come about? It was Gerard's idea. Not a very hard idea. <laughs> let's, let's put all of Moriessen's brilliant songs together and sing them to the world. And so uh, it wasn't a particularly original idea. But uh, he was nice enough to go along with it. We went through all his hundreds of songs, which are each and every one is brilliant and different and beautiful. And mm -hmm. uh, it, that in itself was fun great uh, journey and we came up with a set of songs that we felt worked out of context in the review and so we have anything can happen in the theater and indeed it does. I, I did get to see it and I'm just curious obviously I got to see it I'm just curious because you gave it a storyline it does have a bit of a spine. The, yes. The, you want to talk a little bit about that was that a collaborative thing well, as yeah, well? well I, I knew it had to open uh -huh. so, and we, we <laughs> can call it anything can happen in the theater so I wrote the opening and, and so if you write the opening you know um, when you write a theater song, it's always in response to a situation. And so I had to invent the situation. And the situation is, is that that show opens uh, with a short overture, and then one actor comes storming in, storming in and screaming and yelling about the audition from hell. And then another with the same. And why do we put up with this? And then they sing, you know, then they sing the opening number, which you want to know why I put up with all this aggravation? Okay. Because All an actor right. will do anything to work. It's true. And we know that. that. <laughs> and that's the opening. Now, when I was watching the Grand Hotel number, I kept thinking, when does Joel Gray come out? When does Joel Gray come out? Oh. And uh, uh, was it hard to move away? Was it hard for you to play it straight? Uh, no. No, because I love these songs. I was totally into them. And, uh, I mean, I love theater in general. So, of course, a great writer I would love even more. No, it was not hard to play it straight. It wasn't, uh, you know, it, it was... Uh, work to find out which song goes next to which song, which Maury was also tremendous at, and to find out who sings what. The tailoring was work, but not uh, to play it straight. That's, uh, that's well, okay more, with Well, more me. specifically, first of all, I, 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 there's a, I've written a lot of comedy, and there's nobody I can think of better to present and to direct comedy than Gerard. Yeah. Well, you know, Gerard and I have known each other ever since I was in the BMI Theatre Workshop, and he was in the workshop, and then Lehman Engel died, and I took over, and Gerard stayed there. But, you know, when Gerard was in that workshop, like all of us, we were writing songs, uh, 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 assignments, and we were writing theatre songs. Gerard was writing theatre songs. He was writing comedy songs. He was writing songs that are supposed to take you from point A to point B. And, uh, and then one day he, 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 he wrote a, a fantastic parody, right, and, and uh, discovered that part of his, uh, his uh, talent as well. But he's always had a talent for, uh, for playing it straight as well, whether it's going to be uh, tug at your heartstrings or whether it's going to be funny. And, and I think that he's absolute master at handling the tempo of the evening mm -hmm. uh, so, mm -hmm. that, uh, so that uh, everything is unexpected. And, and as we used to say at, 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 in the BMI <laughs> workshop, something has to land and it has to be a complete surprise. And the moment it happens, you must feel it cannot have been otherwise. Right. And, and Gerard's a master at that. Well, thank you, Maureen. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, with material like that to work on, who couldn't uh, do that, right? right. Now, there's no real story. There's no, there are no anecdotes. Just... Just the music, just the songs. Just right. the music, right. And we did decide that early on. So let, let the material speak for itself. It establishes itself, you know. And, and so, uh, and, and, you know, uh, I don't know who it was who said, uh, well, a number of people uh, have said, you know, in the idea of theater song that I think Sondheim said it. Uh, a, a theater song is a three-act play. Mm -hmm. and, and most of my theater songs are that, you know. So they really establish their own tone, their own storyline, their own conflict, their own resolution. And, uh, and so you can go from, from one to the other, and they should be whole, and, and a whole meal when, as each one ends. And it's very clear in a review format or in a cabaret format, because then they do each tell right. their own story. Yeah. And I really did appreciate that, the, 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 
maybe there was no plot, but each song right. was like a little one act. Play. Absolutely. And, and then, of course, because we're, we're alive, right, so we can make decisions, mm. uh, we responded to uh, the talents of the people we cast. It, we had a plan, but then when we saw who we had hired mm -hmm. and what they could do, mm -hmm. we made adjustments so that because no matter what we do somebody's got to get it across the footlights to the people on the right. other side and that's where you have you know Mamie Paris who's got a high C and a deep belt and, right. and you know people who have such extraordinary varied gifts we had to feed their talent and give them the kind of material that would show them to best ad ad advantage I always believe that if there's not a book in a review then the actor becomes the person you identify with so it's wow what else can Mamie Paris do it's fun right to see her do that, and you cheer for her inside but what a like gift. you would for a character. What a gift to these actors to be put in that position with you at the helm. Yeah. Because for you to give, you know, and, and your music, yeah. I, I just, it's, it's, that's a perfect storm. Well, it's a collaboration, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, that's, why, that's, when you, well, that's why when you're doing an, uh, uh, an actual original musical, mm -hmm. you go with the talent. I mean, I didn't know Anita Morris had a high C. <laughs> and then I wrote a result. Uh, Lily, I was just telling you the story. I didn't know... Uh, uh, Lillian Montevecchi was that good a singer, so I wrote her that song, and she won the Tony. You know, Fox. but it wasn't in the show. You know, <laughs> um, but and so we we do. You always do the same thing with our. This is an extraordinary cast of people. We, we're lucky. And by the way, today. although we had a we had a tremendous run at the York, uh, the show will be done again, and uh, Maury recorded a cast album with an orchestra that'll be coming. Oh up. wow! Yeah, I, when is it going to be done March, again? Said... March the 6th with uh, charts by, uh, uh, orchestrations by Doug Besteman and it's for eight oh. instruments. Big, it's, oh wow, sound that is a big deal. Yeah, very exciting. And New York will have that then to sell sure, up there. Sure, everybody right? else can have and that And online too, too right. I'm sure, right? Right, we'll do it in your living room. Okay. Uh, well, I was planning on that. Okay. I was going to ask you that later, but um, now be I'm, we're going to, we're going to segue slightly because we're talking about the York Theater. York. The next show up at the York Theater happens to be uh, Bro Forbidden Broadway, The Next Generation. We couldn't get all the dates we wanted to at the triad, so we're moving it to New York. I always welcome Forbidden Broadway in a theater setting because then we can do the dancing and the movement mm -hmm. and the spoof becomes more self-realized. Absolutely. And, now, and a, lot of, a lot of your songs have been done in Forbidden Broadway. What oh, yeah. Well, I, I believe uh, Stephen Sondheim and I are the only two who send Gerard our work for the show before the show opens, <laughs> so he has a lot of time to make fun of it. Well, what, what was your reaction when you first oh, I, saw him? I loved it. Well, don't forget, I've loved him, and we've been friends ever since, you know, before any of us we had our work publicly performed. But I, uh, so I, as, as soon as he saw Titanic, of course, you know, the guys come out and they don't see anything, and they think, there she is. And so it was ship of air that, that was for Titanic. Well, and, but it's a badge uh, of honor. The Grim Hotel. Grand, Grand Hotel became Grim, Grim Hotel. Grim Hotel, yeah. With Joel Gray. Uh, with, uh, eventually, all the right. characters go through the volume right. uh, of uh, Grand Hotel. Right. That's where we learned at Finnerati that you can actually change anybody's costume in 20 seconds. That's right. Because we had four actors to do 20 parts. And then the last one yeah. that comes in was Joel Gray. And he'd say, sorry, this looked like a quasi That's right. Yeah, and but, actually, yeah. I, you, I, you, actually, you took, you know, from Vicki Baums, you know, Grand Hotel. People mm -hmm. come, people go, people move chairs. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, love just I love that line. I love that line. Yeah. 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 Well, good. that's a, a great But song. it's such a badge of honor to have. Yes, it, it is. exactly. I, under, I remember you telling me you once. So. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> but I remember you telling me once that somebody came to you and asked you why they, why they, you hadn't done them yet. I think it was Not Fabulous. to be Carol noticed. Channing. It was Carol Channing. Carol okay. Channing. The late and great <laughs> Carol not, not, to be, not to be so, f so much in the forefront that they have to make fun of you. Right. Exactly. That's, exactly. Yeah. That's what, what's death. wrong with me? What am I, chopped liver? Right. <laughs> like well, I think the fact you said you love the theater, and I think that's been always been reflected okay. in the show, and I think that's why. Uh, well, that's probably why no one's tried to shoot you over the years. <laughs> Well, but the best Somebody thing is, to, the best I, I thing is that you can you can bring your out of town people who don't I'm not know the about show, the critics. Yeah. who now, don't this, know the this show. This new Forbidden is all new. Mm -hmm. No Annie. No Lee Miz. No Cheetah Rita. Because there's been just, so much time. <laughs> you have so many times. So many shows. All the new shows like Beetlejuice and Frozen and Hades Town. You know, so it's all new. And Evan Hansen. The next, Evan Hansen. It's the next generation. We're passing which is, it on. Which because is why when it I says did the, the show next. with Lang originally, you know, we were 25, right? That was or, many, or many, many things. Yeah. So, I, so I, our cast kept getting older, and the finally I said to my uh, producer John Fritz, and I said, "We should do Fit and like it originally done, was done." With, with 25 year olds. Well, one of these looks like a kid kid. One of them is oh, a kid. Oh, is a kid. Okay. I, have <laughs> seen, I have seen this show and uh -huh. run to this show. I, I, I can't oh wait. We never got to see it. Josh just to remember that name. He's also a great young writer oh. and he's a wonderful performer, loves theater himself. 
Uh, he's already had a, a couple of shows. He steals raid. the show. He's fabulous. He steals the show. Well, we speaking, can't speaking wait. Speaking of the next generation, you know, you've been a teacher, and obviously you guys have been in the business for a long time. What do you think of the current, what is the state of the art of the musical theater? It's never been better. It's never been more hopeful. It's never been more thrilling. It's never been more international. It's never, I mean, you know, my work is done in like 13 languages. And, and, and there are people in Japan right now and in Czech Republic and, you know, writing new musicals. And it's, you know, it's thrilling. It's become the vernacular of the whole world's popular music. And the rethinking of certain shows like o Oklahoma and whatnot, that you're okay with that? I loved it. Oh, I, no. you know, I okay. love Oklahoma. I love Shirley Jones and Gorda McRae and Tadeo. <laughs> but I just love this new version, and I think it's a great testament. Personally, I think it's a great testament to Roger Hammerstein that you can mine that type of gold mm -hmm. in the material. It's mm -hmm. like Shakespeare. You can take it. I hope somebody well, does that to my work. Yeah. Uh, you know. Well, speaking well of they did. Work, there, is, nice. there is one show in yeah. here that has not gotten as much exposure. Uh, it's called In the Beginning. Very well represented. It's my Bible show. Yeah. Can you tell me a little about it? Yeah, well, you know, I, uh, I, I was tortured at my yeshiva, <laughs> and, and I thought I would, uh, I would write a musical based on the first five books of the Bible. The working title was One, Two, Three, Four, Five. And that, that's why I wrote nine after that. And the plan was <laughs> to write a sports musical, two, four, six, eight, <laughs> and, and, and then an X-rated one called 69. Um, and, but we got as far as one, two, three, four, five. And uh, Larry Gelbart ended up writing the book. And, uh, and Sly Fox and Mesh. It, well, and some other things, but and, and uh, he was hilarious, obviously. Uh, and uh, we, we did it. Manhattan Theater Club uh, did it uh, at City Center. And uh, it, it was, uh, uh, we had a wonderful time. Uh, Herman Levin actually uh, um, took an option out on it. And, and, and it, we had, so you know, it's one of those shows that was always a wonderful show. Uh, Gerard and I did it up at, uh, in Maine Main State, State and Gerard directed it. So it didn't get to Broadway. Not, you know, not every show goes to Broadway. But there's some wonderful material in it, or, or oh, so I'm told. Obviously. Well, it was lovely oh, that you, we got to hear that. You know, or New Words is, is in it. Yeah. Everybody says, that's my best song, or, you know, yeah. Mr. Sondheim says, that's my best song. And, uh, and so that, this is an opportunity to take, you know, good material that, from a show that never went to Broadway. And, uh, you know, and put it on Broadway. Put it on Broadway. You'll okay. see more of it too. Great score, great score. Okay, so our guest this evening, Maury Yeston, composer, lyricist, Gerard Alessandrini, lyricist, director, Maury. jack of all trades and creator of Forbidden Broadway. Forbidden Broadway at the York. Anything can happen on uh, DVD, on CD. <laughs> And thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And when you go to the theater, look for Leslie and me, us too. On the aisle.